is uh, for those of you who do not know me, although I see a lot of familiar faces already. My name is Miguel Nacenta, and I'm the current chair of the ISS Steering Committee. Uh, so this is an opportunity for us to um, to kind of like listen to you. I'll, I'll just, uh, in two sentences, I'll say that the steering committee essentially is charged with uh, the responsibility of the continuity and the health of the, of the conference. And the, so things that are more like, not necessarily specific about the single edition of the conference, but more like, how do we keep going? And what do we take forward? What do we don't? And um, we really need to, listen to you, et cetera. So, um, so this is your opportunity to, um, to, to tell us what you think and what we should do differently. And, um, but before I do that, I would say um, that um, it's very important for us to thank the incredible effort of the team that have organized this year's um, conference, especially given, given the, the circumstances. Uh, so thank you very much, Joachim and Alfredo, for chairing this, and Nick and Fanny for um, for putting together what it seems like a really nice program as well. And of course, Daniela and Joao for the uh, local organization or virtual local organization. It certainly feels like, it does feel like a place um, a little bit, given the circumstances. So. Um, so with that, I just uh, want to open the floor for any issues that you consider important. And if not, if nothing comes up, I do have some uh, topics that can be used to redirect the conversation. But um, um, anything, I would say actually anything is appropriate here. If you want to say uh, thanks to the organizers, um, etc., that's fine, but also um, we're very open to feedback of any any type, constructive and not. So thank you very much, um, everyone, and just um, we're listening. Let me just make a little correction there. Uh, I thank you very much for uh, acknowledging it as for the organization, but a special word is needed also to the online chairs. The, the online presence of the conference is mostly due to them, not the, the local chairs. So Daniel and Nadia, thank you very much. Oh, indeed. Yes. And I, I would like to acknowledge especially... Uh, João, can you turn all your screen on? João Moreira. Okay. <laughs> so, João Moreira is our very discreet uh, video share. He has been uh, largely responsible for the flawless performance of Zoom so far. Maybe I should not say this quite in advance. We still have two sessions to go. So, uh, João, thanks a lot for your efforts and congratulations. And I also would like to just add a few words about the steering committee because Miguel already introduced himself as the current chair of the steering committee. And maybe just to say who is present from the steering committee because not everybody might want um, or might be aware of uh, this. So there's uh, Stacy Scott uh, currently uh, to be seen here and Mark Hancock and uh, Bong Shin Lee and myself and Miguel, obviously, because he introduced himself already. I think, did I miss somebody? I uh, Not uh, currently present, but we still have Hideki Koike <clears throat> in the steering committee, as well as Johannes uh, Schöning and Edward C. So they are not present at the moment for some reasons, but we, uh, um, the five of us are here to answer your questions also and to maybe hear your concerns or ideas for further development of this conference. So anyway, I, I would welcome uh, as this year's organizer, uh, by the way, I've been, we are going to produce a report on this and this is your occasion if you are not one of the organizing committees to uh, tell us about things that you think that could be improved for next year. ACM is making a big effort in trying to make these things work. And uh, I think uh, 
one of the things that I can advise is that barring any natural catastrophe uh, or Trump's lawyers, we are going not to make a, uh, um, a loss in this conference. And I think we are one of the few conferences this year that uh, I'm proud about that. So uh, please feel free to let us know how we can improve. It may be or maybe not that uh, 2021 will also be a year of virtual conferences. So your feedback is important to improve what comes next. I just wanted to add to that. Um, so I know many of us have been to various conferences over the last you know, few months uh, or since the lockdown. Um, and every conference uses some different set of suite of tools. So we're using Zoom and Discord at this conference. Um, I know CSCW used the Crowder app and Discord. So different conferences are choosing different um, choices. So please, please give us feedback, uh, whether you direct it in email or here in the town hall about our choice of uh, Zoom and Discord. I know myself, I, I, it's the first time I've ever used Discord. I did find it a little bit confusing. I'm still trying to figure out how to clap. <laughs> I don't know how to clap in Discord. Um, but, you know, so there's a learning curve with each of these tools. Um, and, you know, some of us are more or less familiar with the tools from other um, venues, but but please give us feedback on uh, if there are other tools, because uh, as been, has been said, you know, we might find ourselves next year um, as a virtual conference uh, just because of conditions. So please give us feedback on that and, and suggestions. If you have been to a conference and have used a different tool that you found was uh, maybe better in posters or demos or, or things like that, rather than just the kind of standard talk sessions, um, we would really be open to those suggestions. So thank you. So when can we start chiming in for feedback? This was the clapping sound, sorry. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Go. Um, so let me just say, I'm very impressed with how well this was organized, honestly speaking. Uh, you guys have been on the ball 24 seven pretty much from the looks of it to you know get everything together. Really the hardest thing of this kind of conference I found already is the time zone differences trying to pick that right sweet spot. And you guys have just managed to get there, just managed to get there. Wow. There's another conference, Ismail, which is using this uh, Verbella, I think it's called. It's kind of a virtual conference in a video game. And whilst this sounds like a great idea, it's completely useless for quickly setting up these uh, presentations. So I think this combination of Discord and uh, Zoom very useful. Thank you for the feedback. Um, I would just like to uh, notice that Nick and uh, Fanny were very instrumental in uh, getting the time zone oriented nature of this program uh, set up. And Mauricio, our webmaster, has also been of great help. Yeah, talking about papers, I don't know if, uh, if, if there's no other comment at the moment. Um, many of you probably have, uh, uh, have uh, noticed the change this year, right? We went from uh, the normal conference proceedings to journals. There were lots of things and lessons learned along the way. Uh, I think the kind of uh, um, the, 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 the train is now running full speed. And I think uh, it's exciting to see how it will turn next year out with like two complete cycles and everything. But I'm just wondering for that particular subtopic, if anyone has um, comments, suggestions uh, or anything. I mean, I'm putting everyone on the spot here, but otherwise also you can send that to me and Fanny also uh, directly as a message uh, because we're interested now. I mean, we tried to optimize it as we went along as much as we could, but there are probably still a few things we can optimize. Yeah, I know already that we had some um, authors withdrawing their papers because they find the next deadline like for the major revision uh, for like the two, like currently we have have set it up so that we have a rolling deadline, which is like two deadlines per year for one uh, conference. And uh, some authors have already found that it's it's too long of a wait, and we we lost a few papers under the major revision uh, decision already to because uh, because of the long wait. Um, so maybe like we can revisit and have perhaps a four four cycle 
uh, I don't know what, what would be best, but if, if people have some ideas and some comment on, on that, we, we would be happy to hear. Yeah, maybe you can negotiate with the uh, editor-in-chief of uh, Pacm on HCI that uh, this uh, we could have a special section on um, uh, ISS uh, you open or year round so that people did not need to have their to wait for the next semester for getting their paper published but that the papers could be published as soon as they were complete and done and then uh, there would be this mutual understanding that authors would be naturally invited and expected to present at the next um, ISS. This is my vision as an editor-in-chief for another journal that uh, I think we owe it to the authors to get the publication as out as soon as possible. So I would try and negotiate that flexibility with the editor-in-chief. certainly possible to optimize it. I mean, that's what already the two cycles are for, or four cycles. If you make it completely open, that changes very much the model, even more dramatically of how um, uh, reviews and organization would be done. But what you mentioned, Joachim, in a certain way is already the case, right? With two cycles, if you get accepted for the first cycle, obviously you you are accepted with your article for the, for the in-year conference. Uh, and if with four cycles, that would be the same. But I hear what you're saying. I mean, it, it is one possible change to completely, completely change this model. And um, that's probably something that the, uh, the steering committee can discuss as one options with um, probably not for next year, because I think they are the kind of two cycles are, are set, but then maybe for the year after. But uh, Miguel wants to say something. Yeah, so I, I got a comment from an anonymous person who trans gave this to me. And um, they said that um, that we're pulling a little bit on the other direction is um, so so the question here too is if we have kind of like a review process that is more like a journal shouldn't be um, instead of trying to rush things and having this model of like like as soon as possible or a yes or no kind of like decision um, whether we would have something that is kind of like more detail like where more papers get in eventually uh, and and there's kind of like a little bit more of a duty of care um, exerted by the reviewers and by the editors on the paper that bring the paper to be the best uh, that it can be rather than kind of like receiving these um, uh, major um, uh, kind of like re revisions type of thing and kind of like being uh, so so I think there's there's a difficult trade-off to be done here. One, one specific comment I also received is that the optics of major revisions receiving kind of like a one in the system um, make some people feel like, um, like, like, the, like the paper is a failure or that nobody liked it, when in reality, that's, that's not the case, right? Major revisions might mean like, this paper has huge potential, but it's not quite there yet, right? So the, uh, the reason for that, Miguel, is very simple. And that is that PCS was never built really for a journal review process. So we're kind of hacking the tool here. The numbers, as we explained in emails to authors and reviewers and panel, uh, sorry, not panelists, editorial members, didn't have meaning as they did before. Um, in, in the journal review process. But our idea is that all of these little things that we also noticed only along the way go into PCS and there is a mode where you can disable um, um, many more of these things which showed up. And again, are a bit of the, the, the kind of history of what PCS is built for. But we, we definitely hear these, uh, these concerns and uh, particularly the ones you mentioned and that's already on the radar for, for um, requiring changes. I'm just I'm just passing them on. I think I think personally I think that it will take a while also, not only for the organizers and the editors and the reviewers, but also for the community to kind of get used a little bit more to this to this philosophy. Because I think there's a lot of people that are still like, oh, yeah, I want my paper out as soon as possible, right? But um, so we have to be able to offer that extra value too of like. Um, well, you might not be going to this conference quite yet, but um, but really, these are experts that are trying to help your paper achieve the, the biggest impact that it can, right? 
Um, yeah, I think that uh, uh, there might be a way to uh, make the, the best of both worlds. I mean, the fact that the paper is published, say, next uh, January, doesn't prevent people from presenting their results uh, come November. Indeed, we got papers from Kai, uh, and uh, uh, I think this was a great addition to the program. And I would like to thank Nick and Fanny to take the extra effort to go after these people. And uh, these are papers from March, and uh, they have kept uh, their freshness and their um, uh, relevancy. So I think that getting the papers out as soon as possible in the pattern uh, should not preclude people from coming uh, four, six months later and present them at the conference to get more feedback and to interact with the community so we can get a journal publication, which is important for people uh, almost all, all over, especially Japan, China and Europe and um, uh, interaction with the community. That's what these co conferences are for. So I, uh, I have a few words to say as well. So I just for context, uh, I, I'm Mark Hancock and I'm also um, the uh, representative for ISS on the PACM HCI committee. Um, and so a lot of the things that we're talking about here are things that the, the entire um, group of PACM HCI is also discussing. Uh, so for instance, the continuous submission is something uh, that CSUW is moving towards as well. Um, and uh, I think it's a great idea if we can make it happen. <laughs> um, there is a lot of workload though added to the reviewing committees if we do go in that direction. So we need to be aware of that workload um, and make sure that we have enough resources and enough people that volunteer to help with it. Um, uh, but I think it's really, it's more like a journal that way and that's actually really good. Um, the other thing that was mentioned was PCS and, and it is an option uh, that if we wanna switch to Manuscript Central um, uh, that we can do that, but we do, um, there are trade-offs to all of these systems. And so people that have used uh, Manuscript Central might already know um, it has its own issues. <laughs> um, uh, and so for instance, PCS is actually pretty good at things like discussions among the reviewers and that just doesn't happen with something like Manuscript Central. Um, and so, uh, yeah, it, th these systems are sort of uh, broken for the, the situation that we have where we have an in-person conference that we want to support, uh, but at the same time want to do journal quality uh, uh, paper reviews. Um, uh, but uh, th those options are available. And I just wanted to mention that because I think if there's, if there's um, enough support from the ISS community to move towards this kind of continuous model, we should uh, think about making that happen in the future. And, and as Nick says, probably not for 2021, uh, but maybe 2022 or later. So. I'm done now. <laughs> uh, I would just add to that, that uh, uh, James Stewart, the guy who manages and uh, operates PCS is very responsive. So uh, one possibility was try to engage James Stewart since uh, Kai has such a huge uh, uh, collection of conferences that operate with PCS that we could have these modifications so that PCS is more friendly to this hybrid uh, model that we are moving to. Um, and I guess another thing to mention is that uh, I think old PCS is also used by CSCW on purpose because it sorts this a little bit better um, <clears throat> instead of using the new dot precision conference version. Uh, so we might want to think about that too. Uh, and uh, one uh, more thing uh, to talk about is the uh, that we probably will, uh, because we're being pushed from PACM HCI switch to um, uh, a model where we're not going to necessarily release the papers uh, at the same time that the conference happens because um, this has a negative impact on our impact factor. <laughs> um, and so oh, yeah. we, we will likely be switching to a model where PACM HCI uh, has multiple conferences in one issue. Um, and does a regular release of those issues. Um, so this idea of having it, uh, the paper be released uh, when it's ready uh, in a continuous kind of submission works well with that actually. Um, and we might wanna consider going in that direction as well. Uh, well, as long as I think, uh, as long as we can have the preprints available at the conference, I don't think that would be a big issue. Uh, although authors would tend to see, well, I need this paper for my graduation. There are conflicting interests at play there. And I think like for graduation, most of the time you can say accepted uh, and not published. Yes. 
and that's yeah. fine. And we would have that situation happen for sure. Um, and I and I do think we would need to have some. Uh, we'd need to think through the the, the digital systems that we're using because uh, on the d digital library it wouldn't be released until the publication date. But we could easily provide uh, a link on our main website uh, to the paper until then, a preprint. I just wanted to say something, having been the uh, in uh, Nick and Fanny's position several times recently. Um, one thing I would like, just in terms of the conference, uh, as Nick and Fanny found out, having a review cycle in the summer is really, really, really difficult, and it's hard to chase okay. people around during vacations. Uh, for the most part, our community is at the Northern Hemisphere, so that's summertime uh, for us. Um, so having, you know, more loads spread out throughout the year is very helpful for the community, I think. Um, but on the other hand, if we move to a complete uh, open-ended journal cycle, which on one hand can mean um, we get papers out quicker. On the other hand, it can mean you're chasing reviewers because I know myself, honestly, I don't prioritize journal papers in the same way I prioritize a conference paper with a, a fixed deadline in terms of my reviews, just because everybody's so busy. So um, I, I'm a little bit worried if we completely open it up and we don't have these very fixed deadlines for um, when the review cycles are done, that that can actually delay publication, just like most journals do not publish as quick as we do. The advantage of publishing in computer science and related fields and conferences is papers get out fast. Um, if we move to a complete journal cycle or journal model, uh, we actually may hurt ourselves. So uh, we do need to balance though those kind of, uh, it, it might seem like you might get it out faster if you could submit it quicker, but on the back end, reviewers might take longer. So we have to be a bit careful about that. Uh. I would suggest instead of constantly able to submit, you have a series of monthly deadlines where you only accept X amount of papers. I think someone said something just now, but I could barely hear anything. Uh, that, was, that was me. Did you hear my last 20 seconds? I guess not. Could, could, could um, you say that again? It was something about the submission, right? A fixed fixed number of submissions or something, or yeah. So I, I'm imagining. So the big thing is about um, the always able to submit is you end up with the sudden influx of papers. You may not be able to deal with them, but if you instead restricted this on a monthly basis of X number of submissions, and then put a cutoff date per month, you end up increasing the time, the throughput that we're allowing papers to be submitted and evaluated without overflowing. That's yeah, probably, it's probably difficult to think through all the eventualities. The problem is with the, uh, with the kind of cutoff uh, that would be arbitrary, it would then almost have like a varying acceptance rate throughout the year, because just if more papers get submitted at one time, it would, I don't know, I, I have to think that through. I'm, I, I think there are probably some, some models to, to think about and I'm, uh, I mean, it's a good good point that you're mentioning some kind of limit on uh, um, on um, the kind of numbers of submissions, but how that could be done, I don't know. I mean, Mark mentioned already, right? This is a general conversation with uh, with uh, several of the ACM, um, uh, PACM, uh, PACM HCI um, um, uh, proceedings now, which are associated to uh, or, or, or coming through the uh, the different conferences, and these are probably conversations done across all those, right? And uh, and more and more conferences are joining, right? I saw uh, Kai Play just joined uh, Packham HCI, which is uh, which is great news. So, yeah. So may maybe it would be good to hear very briefly, at least from some of you, if you have published, even if your experience um, was good and not necessarily bad, like like to hear it from you, because sometimes we we tend to highlight too much, kind of like the. Uh, the the negatives we want to also know uh, like a little bit the successes and if people just feel generally that it has been good like uh, we need to know that as well to balance it otherwise we will be swinging uh, completely um, uh, one one year to the next. Uh. 
I guess we only have negatives. And <laughs> does does that say something about the journal, the typical journal and paper revision process? Um, I know we're near the end of the town hall. We got to start a bit late, but I did want to change the topic uh, just for, I just want to get one thing in there. Um, I really enjoyed the, the way the paper sessions are designed this year. Um, I really liked the short talks um, and with a kind of panel style talk and the discussions at the end, I felt that made the, the sessions go very smoothly. So even if we do it in person, I, I, I actually favor that approach. Um, I, I really enjoyed that. So, uh, so whoever, whosever idea that was, uh, thank you for that. It, it, it was really useful um, especially when uh, you're trying to join sporadically um, to be able to hear the great work. And I wasn't always around, uh, able to stick around for the discussions because of the virtual nature. But um, yeah, I really, really enjoyed Like the length was perfect. I got the information I needed and, uh, you know, the papers I knew that I could go follow up and read the rest of the paper. I, I knew the essentials um, and all the authors are doing a great job with the presentations. Well, so uh, maybe maybe we should close this up. I'll say that um, you can write to um, our email address. Um, I believe it's steering at iss.acm2.org. But if not, just kind of like write to to me directly. I'll convey everything to the steering committee where uh, we're meeting next week. And that also that the steering committee membership is an rolling basis. So if um, if any of you wants to nominate anyone or nominate themselves, um, we will be happy to examine those um, those nominations. And thank you very much, everyone. Again, the fantastic organization and the attendees and everyone for keeping this community alive oh. and pushing the research forward. Uh, before everybody goes away, I would like to take a, a group photo. So Bruno, Damien, Zara, Takashi Matsumoto, and uh, Bruno, uh, Bryson Lawton, Aizen, Florian Weidner, Jean van der Donkt, Pavel Wozniak, uh, Puran Girani, Higashi Takafumi, Risha Garval, João Alves, and uh, Ele uh, George Elefterakis. Can you please make yourself seen? I know that's an advantage of not to be seen, but this is not Monty Python. So yeah. please show yourselves. Oh. What, what is what is the address to go to for this? Uh, you can take, let's take a picture here before everybody just disappears and then I'll paste the um, Hub Hub address. But uh, I can't use Hub Hub. Sadly, I'm on an Android phone. Okay, well, uh, the other people just please uh, turn their cameras on so you can take the um, the equivalent of a live uh, photo. Yeah. Oh, this is better on YouTube. Only the active people show up. While you are still uh, switching on your cameras, I just wanted to emphasize that we would like to, in the steering committee, to have new members in the steering committee. Really, I would like to advertise this. It's great to engage for the community. It's great if you're interested in the ISS topics and uh, some of you also started like you, maybe postdocs or late PhD students. And now uh, we have been serving for a couple of years and attending the conference quite often. Please try to engage. It's a great um, uh, thing to, to uh, further develop that conference. Please uh, um, join us and approach us. And I posted uh, in the chat uh, the link to the um, ISS steering committee website where you find all relevant information. Okay, so the Hub Hub link is here. And thank you. I've just uh, taken the. Let me see if more people turn their cameras on. Nope. Okay. Well, thanks everybody. Um, missing a couple of people, but uh, I guess some of us are shyer than others. Um, Joquim, I can send you a quick screen snap of me if you want to Photoshop that into the Hub Hub picture that you take. Okay, sure. Um, so just click uh, click on this link and let's meet on Hub Hub and see how that goes.